Our top story tonight has to do with the finance bill and Anglican Church of Kenya Archbishop Jackson Olesa Pitt led key stakeholders in the financial, transport and engineering sectors in calling upon Parliament to reject the finance bill 2024 in its current form. While formally tabling his submissions before the National Assembly Finance and Planning Committee, the ACK Archbishop warned of an imminent economic crisis in the coming months. Seth Olale followed the heated proceedings at Parliament buildings. So Lord, help us always to be careful. In whichever generation, when we sit to make decisions on behalf of others, the Lord, we can be guided and led by you. Increase taxes at your own peril. That is a sound warning from Anglican Church of Kenya Archbishop Jackson Olesa Pitt to a parliamentary committee conducting public participation for the Finance Bill 2024. In opposing the bill in its current form, the SK Archbishop, while formally presenting his submissions before the National Assembly Finance and Planning Committee, termed the bill a tax burden to Kenyans who are already grappling with the high cost of living. The proposed excise duty will lead to higher prices for essential household items such as cooking oil, soap and bread. This will disproportionately affect the low-income families, increasing the cost of living and reducing their uh, disposable income. The Anglican Church of Kenya Archbishop prophesying economic doom in the months to come if Parliament will ignore the plight of taxpayers and go ahead to pass the controversial bill in its entirety. The higher cost may be burdensome for small and medium enterprises. The increased expense could reduce profitability and competitiveness as many rely on these services for business operations. Additionally, this increase may lead to a decline in the use of formal money transfer services as individuals and businesses might seek cheaper informal alternatives, potentially reducing overall government re revenue and hindering financial uh, inclusion efforts. The SEK Archbishop faulting the drafters of the bill for being insensitive to the needs of ordinary monanchi, stating that even the church itself will be affected with the proposed tax increase on bread and wine that is used during Holy Communion. There should be a kind of a caveat that uh, things like unleavened bread, which is purely for Holy Communion, it's not something you can eat and get satisfied, or alter... <laughs> Or altar wine. I, I, I think I think this. <laughs> you, you must now help us uh, to see how you can segregate and remove altar wine from other wines in the shelves, and uh, remove unleavened bread from other breads in the shelves, so that we can <laughs> we can have an opportunity of giving people holy communion, uh, because you are going to tell us stop holy communion, which is a sacrament, uh, which we cannot avoid doing it. Telcom Kenya expressed worries about the adverse effects of taxing SIM cards and increasing digital taxes from 15 to 20 percent. Um, increase in, in, in IDF, this will affect SIM cards if the increase from 2.5 to 3 percent. Um, you know, that has a knock-on effect on the cost of, uh, of imported machinery in, 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 um, in our sector, in, in imported technology and equipment. Uh, and also uh, on SIM cards, that, like I mentioned earlier, and uh, we ask that that one be, uh, be, be reconsidered. In the manufacturing and construction sectors, representatives from the Institution of Engineers of Kenya advocated for the removal of taxes on construction materials to support local industry growth and infrastructure development, especially for specialized hospital materials, in order to facilitate affordable health care. Exemptions need to be retained. And the justification is that the removal of the exemptions will discourage investments in the construction of specialized hospitals, and this will also increase the cost of such projects and increase unemployment. 
Uba Kenya warning the parliamentary committee that the proposed 20% significant economic presence tax will make online transportation services expensive and the additional costs will be passed on to the driver and passenger. The withholding should be by platform owners who make payment to platform users, not platform owners who facilitate payment. Other key stakeholders highlighted the potential negative impacts of increased taxes on different goods and services. For instance, a proposed 20% tax on software payments was criticized for potentially raising software costs and driving distributors out of the market. Concerns were also raised about high custom duties on materials essential for the daily industry, with stakeholders arguing that duties ranging from 10% to 35% could reduce milk consumption and deter investment in the sector. Today I've seen someone take a clip of me saying that we can manufacturers should take their jobs to, I don't know, to Uganda and, and import here. Uh, and, and of course it is deliberate uh, cutting off the context of that conversation. I said and I reiterate that one of the things that we are very conscious about is we need to make decisions cognizance that we operate in around ESC, ESC region, around Comesa. And therefore, if we make bad decisions, then we risk manufacturers shifting base from our country to our neighboring countries, and then they will then they will import those products to our country and we have exported those jobs to those other countries. So it is not that they should go there. So Lord, bless us now, bless us into the future, and bless this team. Seth Olale, Citizen TV.